to do a, a two-part uh, study here. And um, I'm going to start off in Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. I just want to read verse 10. That's where we're going to start today. We're going to talk about um, the judgments. Uh, there are, uh, I believe there's seven judgments in the Bible, but we're going to start talking about uh, uh, the two main ones, the judgment seat of Christ and the, uh, the great white throne we're going to talk about next week. So the judgment seat of Christ, verse 10 here says, But, the, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So we're going to talk about the judgment seat of Christ today. And there's going to be a number of, of um, scriptures we're going to go to this morning. But um, the judgment seat of Christ is the judgment seat where us Christians, and I believe everybody in this room is, is saved, so I believe this is the judgment that's going to be uh, for us. And um, now if we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, should just only have to turn a couple of pages here. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now we're going to start reading at verse 8. Now he that planteth and he that shall receive his own labor, or sorry, his own reward according to his own labor. Now, I believe that this reward takes place at the judgment seat of Christ. Verse 9, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another man build thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay, then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So we're going to just pause there for a moment. So this reward that we're going to receive, that's going to take place at the judgment seat of Christ. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to draw a quick little timeline here. Okay, we've got creation. We've got the cross. We are now in the church age. Then at the end of the church age, I believe there's going to be a rapture. Then there's going to be a seven-year tribulation period. Then there's going to be Armageddon. And then the thousand-year millennial kingdom. So what we're going to be talking about today takes place, I believe, right here. Now, where are we on this timeline? I believe we're right about here. <laughs> I don't know how much more time left we have until this happens. But uh, I don't think it's going to be very long. Anyway, so um, if we look at verse 10 here, according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. So we have a foundation, and what is our foundation? Our foundation is Jesus Christ. And it says so in verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is our foundation. All right. Now, how are we going to build upon that foundation? We're going to build something on that foundation. And really, if you're not building on the foundation of Jesus Christ, you know, there's a little Sunday school song that says, A wise man build his house upon the rock, a foolish man build his house upon the sand. So you got to make sure you have a strong a foundation there. If we look at, uh, keep your finger in 1 Corinthians because we're going to be coming back here. If we go to Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22, says this, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for habitation of God through the Spirit. So we are building upon the foundation, and what we desire is to have a, a, a building, a, a, a structure, 
that is fitly framed together and a holy temple in the Lord, right? Now, you'll notice in verse 20, it says the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now, I do not believe that there are apostles or prophets today. There are some people that even call themselves apostles, and I always think, well, you look good for being 2,000 years old. But uh, nonetheless, um, when, the, uh, when, when people build a house or build a, a church or whatever type of building that you're building, the people that come in and they pour the foundation, they don't hang around until the building is complete. They come in, they do their jobs, and once their job is done, they move on. That's kind of like how I look at the apostles and prophets. You know, they came in, they did what God called them to do, and now they're no longer needed because we have a, a complete scripture. At the time that uh, this was written, the Bible wasn't compiled like it is today. So these things were necessary, but now they're not really necessary. Now, if we go back to uh, where we were in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, um, now if any man build upon this foundation, verse 12, if any man build upon this foundation, so remember, we're talking about what we are building. We're building on the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble. Now, there are two uh, types of things here. And what's going to happen is that this judgment seat, everything that you've done is going to be kind of thrown into a fire. Now, I'm not a great... I'm not a great artist here. That's supposed to be fire. Okay? We're all together on that? All right. Now, what are we going to be judged for? It's not going to be our sins, because our sins were judged here. Right? Our sins were judged at Calvary. So what's going to be judged here is basically what we've done, our service, uh, our work, whatever we've built upon that foundation. You see, that foundation is our salvation. What are we building upon that? There are some people that don't build anything. It just stays as a slab in the dirt for their whole life. And some people build a CN tower. You never know. But, but uh, what you build upon that is basically going to be judged. If we look at uh, verse 12 here, it says, If any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble. Now there is, are two things here. There's gold, silver, and precious stone. Now, what happens? Now that, uh, that fire is probably going to refine that and, and, and make it nice. But now what happens if you uh, have a, a campfire or something and you throw wood, hay, and stubble in it? It's all going to burn up. And what are you going to get is just smoke and ash. You don't have anything to show for it. But if you put in uh, your good works, the things that you've done uh, for him, for the glory of Christ, you're going to get gold, silver, precious stone. And um, if we look now at verse 13, it says, Every man's work shall be made manifest. Now, this is our work. Now, I cannot stress enough, your salvation is not based on works. We all know that here, uh, but a lot of people don't. But anyway, um, we all know it here that um, the work that we do is what we're going to get reward for. This is not our work for salvation. Remember, our sins, our salvation happened here. Our sins, there's a song, a hymn that I love. It's called, um, uh, It Is Well With My Soul. And the uh, third verse of that song says, uh, My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, uh, my sin not in part but the whole, is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Right? So our sin is judged here. Our sin was lifted here, right? So what we're going to be judged here is not for our sin, not for the, the bad things that we've done, but it's going to be done, it's, what we're going to be judged for is what we've done for Christ, what we've done for his glory, not for our glory. Now, why did I, why did I uh, draw fire here? Well, if we look at verse 13, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day, and I believe the day there is, is the day when the judgment happens. The, the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So basically, everything is going to be thrown into this fire. And from this fire, you're going to get...
precious things or you're going to get nothing but ash and smoke. Right? Uh, now, if we look at verse 14, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So if you build upon that foundation for his glory, you will receive a reward. Now, verse 15 says, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So anything not done for Christ is in vain. Now, if we uh, keep your thumb here, let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12, says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, some people seem to think that this means you have to work for your salvation, but no, that's not what this means. Work out your salvation. You know, you're working out what God has worked in. And that is made clear in verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to, to do of his good pleasure. So this is, is the working out of your salvation. You know, when you're saved and you become a, a Christian, um, hopefully there's going to be some fruit in your life. And we've talked about fruit before. But um, you can really tell what kind of a tree something is or what type of a plant something is by looking at its fruit. If you look at a tree or a plant and you see tomatoes growing, you know that's a tomato plant. Or you go to an apple orchard and you see apples, you know those are apple trees. You know, we should be able to tell, oh, this person is a Christian just because of their fruit, right? Now, verse 14 says, do all things without murmurings, which is kind of like complaining, and disputing that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, w without rebuke in the midst of the crooked and perverse nation, and that's what we're living in right now, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. There it is again, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. So once again, what this is, what, what's happening here? Um, laboring in vain. Now, all the work that you do for yourself and, and uh, for the glorification of your flesh, uh, that's going to be running in vain, right? You know, so let's go back here to, uh, to verse, uh, or back to 1 Corinthians, sorry. 1 Corinthians. We look at verse 15 here. It says, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. So that wood, hay, stubble, that, that fire... Uh, the things that are thrown in here that are not for God's glory are going to be burned up. Now, what's going to happen if that's the case? He shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. That's a great eternal security uh, verse right there, but he himself shall be saved. So even if you've done nothing for the Lord, yes, you've got that foundation, you've got that salvation, um, even if you don't build upon it, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to heaven. You've, you're eternally secure, but you're not really going to have much uh, come out of this fire other than smoke and ash, right? Yet so is by fire, right? Verse 16, know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Well, this again, eternal security, you know, that sealing, that saved. Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, Ephesians 1, uh, Ephesians 1, 13. Ephesians 1, 13, <clears throat> one of my favorite verses. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So there you go, it kind of goes hand in hand with um, that spirit that dwells within you. So that's just a, a, a quick look here at the, the judgment seat of Christ. There's a, another verse I want to go to. Let's go to 2 Corinthians now. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. 
<clears throat> For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, this is, this is saved believers. Paul is including himself here. For, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So once again, uh, the things that are good, the things that are done for God's glory, uh, the things that further the kingdom, uh, those are uh, uh, what's done, the good things. And so from that, you're going to get reward. And the bad stuff is just going to be burnt up. It's going to be burnt up. Uh, one more verse we're going to go here before we close. Uh, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. So, you know, God not only rewards the works, but I believe he also rewards the motives behind the works. Uh, and not unto men, knowing that, uh, of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. So once again, this is talking about rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. So everything that we do, if we want that reward, whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, and not unto men. So that is just a, a very quick surface scratch of um, the judgment seat of Christ. And you know what? The way I've kind of uh, looked at that and um, the way I've kind of explained it before, the difference between the two uh, judgments, is uh, the judgment seat of Christ, I kind of look at it as being like a graduation ceremony. You know, even if you get a D, D means diploma, right? So even if you get a D, you don't do anything for Christ. Yes, you, you, you're saved. You've got that bare minimum, the salvation, but you build nothing upon that foundation. Yes, you still got your diploma. You're still going to heaven. You're still, you know, you still got that, that eternal, uh, eternal eternity. But um, those people that work really hard, they get good grades, they do different uh, extracurricular activities, you know, they can get reward above and beyond that diploma, they can get um, scholarships, they can get uh, trophies, uh, different things like that. So that's kind of how uh, I look at the judgment seat of Christ. So why don't we just close here in prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you, Lord, for your word, and we're so thankful for the truth that it contains, Lord. And, and I just want to pray, Lord, that it has been a blessing and an encouragement to each one here. We thank you, Lord, for all of this in Jesus' name.